And it was a guy getting chased by the police, and he uh, blew his head off with a shotgun, but it was all infrared. Oh. And you saw the steam come off. Oh. Of it. What's up, everybody? Before we get into this episode of the Column Tero podcast, I just want you to know that you can help support the growth of this podcast right now by heading over to patreon.com slash Over there, I release an extra episode every week. That episode, believe it or not, is is raw, it's hardcore, it's wild, and it's unedited, and I say a lot of stuff that I cannot say on YouTube, and most comedians we cannot say on these platforms, but over there on Patreon, we still do that. For as little as $5 a month, you can get that extra episode every single week, and it does help us. We keep the lights on above our heads. We can keep the guests coming in and the staff will continue to edit these episodes. We can only do that for the fans like yourself who support us and personally support me or patreon.com slash column Tyrrell. If you head over there right now, join the Patreon. We've got a back catalog of over 300 hours of all my previous podcasts. Guests include Dan, Dan Soda, Big J Okerson, Matt McCusker, Doug Stanhope, just to name a few. It's so much going on for as little as $5 a month. That's an absolute steal. Personally, you would help me out a lot. And I want to thank you so much for helping uh, me grow this podcast. And I want to thank you for the support already. So I won't hold you here any longer. Enjoy the episode. Sakamiko, how are you doing? I'm doing great, buddy. Be- glad to be here, buddy. This is it, dude. Welcome to the palace. The I'm pussy- a big fucking fan of you. I like I, you a lot. I like man. you, dude. Me and you, we, uh, everyone likes you. My girl likes you oh, a lot. My girl, you know, my girl, you're probably my girl's favorite like person she's met in comedy. You know that? You know, she I, brings do that this, up a lot. I, I do this thing where uh, I, I, when I meet uh, comics girlfriends, I uh, uh, listen to them. <laughs> And make eye contact. Yeah. And then, like, if they say something, I ask a follow up. Mm. Like, you know, they're human beings. That's crazy. So Dude, you're, it's so such you're not- a fucking difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are you? So you're a pussy? <laughs> now, she, now she has all, she, she, she has this newfound um, standard for me to, I have to listen to her now. But the problem <laughs> is, everyone can listen to a girl for the first few weeks. Right, I'm gonna, like, then they kind of they kind of run out. Then they start repeating themselves pretty fast. Yeah, and they keep giving you the same problems. You go, I, I thought we solved this. <laughs> Stop dressing like a slut. <laughs> the well is shockingly shallow. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said that to me though recently. Goes, they said they're like, that's why yeah, they, it was a girl. She's like, that's why you're so, that's why you're so attractive is because you listen really well. And I was like, what? Uh, <laughs> but I was genuine, like genuinely was like, you don't know me at all. I was like, you have mental issues because you've obviously just assigned people do that when with people they don't know they'll assign like a oh like a personality to them or whatever yeah no you, as long as you do the nod and the that's yeah. interesting no yeah, it is you know what it is you're very polite you're a polite guy you're a nice you're a gentleman it's because you know? i was raised with all chicks there you go yeah so it's just like wait to talk i'm very polite too like i'm a smut i'm a smut melt fuck but i'm polite like i'll, I'll call you a cunt but i'm like thank you you yeah, can. thank you, cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Please, bitch. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, let's talk about what's gone. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. By the way, Amber Heard. Uh, Amber Heard. Unfortunately for her, she's a bit too crazy. Yeah, but she's so she's so hot. She's just she's, she's so hot. She's very very beautiful. But some of these courtroom pictures, this lifestyle style is taking a toll. Mental her eyes are in, yeah. the eyes are going. Those perks are starting to get a swollen face. Yeah, right? I mean, based on the court pictures, whatever happened, it was her fault. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like they show you the, uh, an old photo of her. It's like, what an innocent, beautiful lady. And then you, it's like, no, Your Honor, look at her now. Yeah. You're like, oh, this treacherous bitch. <laughs> you fucking still at nine. <laughs> yeah. But that's Johnny Depp. Yeah, that's jo- Johnny Depp's no looker these days either. He, yeah, but he, he comes with a legacy. Yeah, he's just like a, the Willy Wonka of a Percocet factory. Uh, he, he, there's someone. I don't. I've, I've told you this shit about him already. I had a buddy that worked at a hotel with Johnny Depp. No. All right. So whatever's happening to him, it's not his fault. <laughs> okay. I think about how long he's been, and I'm not just saying famous. Yeah. I mean, top tier. The guy. Yeah. A Beyond A, fuck, whatever they call it, the yeah. S tier. Is that, is that what they call it that? No, but you know when they do like the ranking charts and yeah. there's A and then there's S tier above it? I, I, I don't know that one. Okay. But I, I, anyway, I'll, 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 I'll regardless. You. Yes. For uh, sure. the, so he's, I don't uh, think he's, he has, he has no concept of reality. I had a buddy that worked uh, at a luxury hotel 
uh, in like the Bowery area. Yeah. And he was the front desk guy overnights. He would uh, work on Howard Stern in the morning and then he worked at this hotel at night. And Johnny Depp stayed there for like an extended period. Yeah. And he had somebody that like kind of whisked him in and people would like whisk him out. And he would always have like handlers basically. And he didn't know how to check in. Yeah. Yeah. Simple stuff. And he said in the middle of the night one night, he gets a phone call from the suite that Johnny Depp's in. And he goes, hi, um, I need I need t- toothpaste. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we're going to have some up to you. He goes, I- actually, I- I'd love to go to the store and get some. How do I do that? <laughs> and he had to walk him through. <laughs> and he goes, well, where would I go? And he goes, well, there's a Rite Aid CVS. He goes, what are those like? Like It was yeah, literally he's, he's, a, a human task. He was trying to sneak out. And he out. had to walk him through it. Yeah. And then he like had more, qu- like, he came up to the desk to like talk to him about it. Because he was like excited, like a little kid. Yeah, he snuck, he's sneaking out. And so I think his existence has been so removed from basic human interaction. For sure. That he has no idea how to respond to any situation. And all these guys. But then this hot, incredible woman comes along and just throws a wrench in everything. Oh, the devil. Just a walking devil she is. Because all he's got to do, he's literally... He got the biggest fran- one of the biggest franchise history of Disney. Yeah. And he went, can I just be Keith Richards? And they went, <laughs> yeah. Because that's really, he's hanging out with Hunter S. Thompson and Manson. Oh. He's living rock star things. And he went, I'll just be Keith Richards. No. And then they went, let's just bring in Keith Richards. <laughs> <laughs> and he got fired. So he got fired from being the world's most famous pirate. Yeah. Did he get fired for it? Yeah, he lost the franchise. Because of this? Because of this shit. Because of this bitch. But he got fired for being a drunk who beats women, which I don't know. Sounds like a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, yeah, he has scurvy and shit. Yeah. For sure. You know he has a vitamin deficiency. Yeah, there's, he's not well. He, no, you can't be. You just can't be in that world and well. It's like, who really maintains a... Uh, down to earth like outlook on life it's but like that's impossible. a sacrifice he made for us and our entertainment it's uh, he's an artist when, when he did fear and loathing he mm. lived on hunter s thompson's fucking floor did he and hunter s thompson just fed him drugs for a month <laughs> oh. was like i'm gonna break him it's for the art <laughs> oh i gotta do it yeah that's uh, crazy yeah he's he's given up but they're all like that my dad when my dad used to work for chelsea football club back in the day um, they had like special handlers for the professional footballers because these guys never really went to school. They just they're just soccer players their whole life. They don't know anything. They would have like someone who would come over and like turn on the heating for them. They're like, no, it's the it's the button on the wall. And they're like, I don't, no, I, what the hell? What is that? They this this guy, it. he's just juggling the <laughs> soccer ball. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you always have all these stories of these guys like they would blow up their sink and stuff. They just like they put fireworks in the bath and blow up their sink and burn down a mansion. And they have they're just like a bunch of fucking spastic kids running around. Well, the that, place. And then like these guys that have been famous actors forever, especially the ones that like lose themselves in the shit. Oh yeah. Like I've heard uh, that meeting De Niro, you might as well have just like met a shoe. Oh, he's just empty. He's just, like, who am I supposed to be right nothing now? Nothing there. Yeah. Until he's supposed to be somebody later. So, yeah. So. I bet it's more close to that than anything else. And she just pushed him and pushed him and pushed him. Yeah. And one of those characters was still in there. And she's lucky it was. Dude, she's not cut up with scissor hands or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which one could come out for sure. Um, but listen, I remember even when uh, Justin Bieber started getting in trouble. This was back in the day, and he yeah. was like nineteen. Yeah, when he was like Eight. pissing in mop buckets. He and was he was speeding. innocent shit, he egg was, and stuff. He was speeding in a Lamborghini. It was like he did sixty five in a forty five zone. He's out of control. I was like, dude, the guy was worth like hundred fifty million dollars, and he was nineteen. It was like, if I'm thirty one now. If you gave me a thousand dollars, I don't know if I'd see Monday. I swear, just the life I would live on that alone would be oh, fucking insane. If I had the money. It could be the nicest girl in the world. After a week, I'd be like, how much to burn her? Mm. <laughs> yeah, there's no way I'm not slapping a piece of meat off Amber, <laughs> Amber, Amber Heard's face. That's like, that's how I don't get into it. Raw meat to the face. That's my thing. 
It was just a good whoosh. And plus, if he's been friends with Marilyn Manson for 20 years, and now we know what Manson's been up to. Fucking Manson was no fucking... He's, <laughs> he's no prince. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> and listen. Who would have thought these weird eccentrics are up to eccentric shit? <laughs> and, and, and molestation is eccentric. It's not like Marilyn Manson literally put out an entire book chronicling his torture of groupies. <laughs> And then uh, albums about it. They, they they changed. They changed. It used to be fine. Now it's not <laughs> fine. That's not my fault. You changed the law. And um, let's see what um, Johnny Depp said about Amber Heard today. She threw the large bottle. So he said that he lost some fingers because he uh, he lost the tip of his fingers um, after she threw a uh, vodka bottle at him. He said she threw the large bottle and it made contact and shattered everywhere. I honestly didn't feel the pain at first at all. I felt heat. And as if something were dripping down my hand, I looked down and realized the tip of my finger had been severed. So she's a fucking, she is a lunatic. It sounds like she's got an arm on her too. <laughs> yeah. She's just, the whole time, no matter what, I just go back to what she looks like. And it's just like, oh, what a dream. Like, I, I cannot hear enough about her to make me still not be like, yeah, of course. Johnny, was it worth it? Of was course it? it was. She's shit in his bed. That, I mean, who hasn't? It could have been Johnny. He doesn't know what. I, we, yeah, he doesn't even know how to clean it up. He had to ring the front desk and be like, "Um." I and need plus, some if you're paper. gonna date a model, An assume, act. yeah, trick that thin. Assume there is a run in her career where she will shit the bed, because yeah. all those chicks are on like laxatives and shit. Yeah, for to sure. To keep them, you know, award show ready. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna put. Well, it's like fucking a girl in the ass and getting mad. There's shit on your dick. That, yeah. And so you put her in the bed. She's criminally thin. You. She's either going to puke or shit in your bed. <laughs> she's criminally thin. I think she's the right amount of thin, all right? <laughs> I'm, no, we don't skinny shame here. All right, Zach? Don't be wobbling in here with your fucking opinions on some healthy women. She's, she's, she's great. Everyone should aspire to be Amber Heard a few years ago. Um, yeah, um, so that was it, basically. Um, I would not survive this deposition based on things I've done in hotel rooms. <laughs> I've reached the point in my adult life where every single hotel room I check into, at some point while I'm there, I will take the smallest washcloth hmm. and use it to wipe my ass and then just throw it in the garbage can. You, show, you don't let them wash it? Well, it's got shit on it. I'm not going to make them pick it up. <laughs> I put it in a plastic bag and I put it in the garbage can. That's nice. Because that is the nicest way to clean your ass is with a fluffy hotel towel and then go goodbye forever. <laughs> if I'm in a room with a double bed by myself, one bed is for sleeping and I come out of the shower with no towel and I roll around until I'm dry. That's wild. <laughs> That's your technique. It's just, a great just, way to live. To, to roll around like a little piggy? Yeah, <laughs> until I'm dry. And then the other bed's for sleeping. <laughs> I'm gonna ask, we shared a hotel room together one time in uh, Austin, and I I only I joined for the last night. Yeah, had you been using that bed that I slept in as your? No, as, because as your we had already established oh, I'm that sorry. you were going to be joining me, so that, I was I was respectful <laughs> of the bed. You should have just been like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that was that was my bed, that was my bath bed. Yeah, no, I knew you were going to be joining me, so I decided to uh, to to treat you with respect and kindness. Oh, that you thank you. But Johnny Depp is an uh, is like. A party animal. We had um, Doug Stanhope on the podcast. Um, you guys can check. If you want to check out that episode, it's exclusively on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Colm Tyrrell. Um, and he was saying, I was talking to him about who's like the biggest drinkers. And I think I said like, is Bert a big drink drinker? And he was like, he... He was like laughing. Doug was like, Bert's a pussycat. He's like, Bert's nothing. And everyone that goes drinking with Bert is like, that guy is an animal. He's like a machine for a drink. The machine. And, uh, he, you know, Doug was listing all these people, and he was saying that uh, Depp, Johnny, was the one. He, he put said, it he, away. He said Johnny's the one. Johnny was the one where Doug was just like, dude, what the fuck? Like, he would just be woken up with, like vodka orange, even though they just went to bed. And he's, it's just a constant fucking world of In my experience, the people like that, one great way to know is if they live on candy. Because you process that alcohol into sugar. And if they haven't had a drink in so many hours, they have a debilitating need for candy. Oh, interesting. So the yeah. people in my life that are like the 24 hour a day drinkers, mm. like if you, if you see an adult man eating a nerd's rope at like 9 a.m., 
He yeah. goes hard. <laughs> I I do have. I feel like the amount of beer I've drank too has a has a big sugar thing on me now. That's when my, I think my face starts getting swollen and shit like that. Um, but I do notice that. Yeah, with the the sugar thing. If I'm not boozing, I'm just like I need like a fucking Dr Pepper or something. Just let me get fucking absolutely ripped up. Yeah, the thing I'm most nervous about is getting like old man drunk nose. Old man, what's that? Just a long nose? No. So um, certain races. Uh, and a, a lot of mostly white people. <laughs> Good. Uh, oh, oh thank fuck. Jesus Christ. Certain races. Uh, when no, you're they about get to say drunk, blacks. When they get drunk, they get flush. Right? They get yeah. like the red face. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Uh, but sometimes you'll burst the capillaries in your nose. Yes. And have you ever old seen man, an old face. man whose nose looks like it's got bumps on bumps on bumps on bumps? Yeah. Like uh, like those old timey comedians. Like, get out of here, kid. You bother me. Yeah, yeah. They have a cigar. And, and they have the, the giant red nose. Yeah. That's years of debilitating alcoholism. Wow. And I always worry. Like, I think that's going to be the day I look in the mirror and I see like the bump nose. Oh, no. And I'll be like, this is a, the, the wheels are coming off. Not the bump we want to have near yeah. our nose at all. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. Maybe, you know, it's a badge of honor. There's a certain point where you just go, yo, oh, fuck it. I'm, a, I'm one of those guys. I'm one of those guys who chose it all the way. And I, but yo, know, like, even like living in an apartment building in New York, there's always like that old man that's stumbling in it, like, when you're getting out of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's just way too loud, way too talkative. You're like, I don't want to be that old man. Yeah. Because you know he's the, he ain't going home to somebody. No. There's, yeah. not a la- there's not a hot dinner waiting for him. <laughs> yeah, there comes a certain point when it's just like, it's it, drinking's all fun when you've got options. But when the, it's the only options, like, that's the sad part, right? Have you ever had a partner that was going as hard as you? No. What are you, nuts? Yeah. I, I couldn't date someone like that. One I of us did- has to be fucking <laughs> normal. I, I dated a girl who was lapping me. Oh, no. I'm talking like, wake me up with shots of vodka, take mm. her to work, bring a water bottle full of Smirnoff with her. Oh. And then meet me and keep going. And I I couldn't do it. It was, it was a of great co- couple months. Yeah. It's too much. I, it was too much, man. No, I'm not. I'm not that guy. I'm not that. I'm not really a day drinker. I can't either. Like I, I like I can't operate really too much. I drink, Every once in a while, it's so fun. Yeah, but I, it's. I'm not working. I'm at. No. The, I'm at a bar. I'd love. Like I used to do it. I don't do it as much anymore. But like on a, a random Tuesday when it's slashing rain and I didn't have anything going on, I'd be at the bar at 10 a.m. just sitting there letting the world go by, just on my phone, sculling <laughs> Bud Lights. You know, just like all day, just chilling, and that's like that's beautiful. When you don't even see the sun, you just walk out and it's already dark. It's like, that's nice. But I'm not like, fucking, I'll never show up with a coffee cup full of vodka and then try to get to work. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, I've, I've only had to go to work drunk a few times and it's it's embarrassing. Y- yeah. It's a gross feeling. Yeah. And this chick was, and it's so funny, she worked in a, she worked in an alcohol program. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just course, a real did. problem. Yeah, you get into the, it's the industry that you're in. It's like, it starts to feel appealing. You know, I used to work in McDonald's and I fucking ate McDonald's every day. You know, so once you're surrounded by booze hounds, it's like, all right, fucking, that's kind of nuts. We actually, we're, we're going to do it. You might know or, or know, know, know if this is true. When Tommy Pope and Chris O'Connor are on the podcast, apparently you can get drunk on Listerine. Now, we are going to do this on a, as a Patreon goal eventually. Tommy Pope's going to come in and get drunk on Listerine. I don't know if it's actually possible. Yeah, it's got to be because what is it, like five or 10%? It is twenty. It's, oh, it's twenty. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's po- like it's poisonous. It's not good for you. Like yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not. I'm sure you can get drunk, but you'll you'll die. You think you'll puke before you I get think, drunk? I think you'll be more ill than you can handle. Who the fuck? I was just talking to somebody who was working but at like, a can hospital. I just interrupt one second? By the way, guys, they're, they're like you. You might know if you've been following the previous episodes. Go check them out. If not, um. There was a fire in this building a couple of weeks ago. Luckily, this room survived. We did get flooded, but everything was okay. So they're renovating the floors above us. So if you do hear drilling and shit like that, I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do about it. Sorry. Uh, I was just fucking talking to me. I can't remember where, where I was, but they worked at a hospital, and they had brought in some old, old, hardcore drunk, mm. and they had to tie him down because he was running around the hospital drinking the sanitizers. 
<laughs> <laughs> they, had a, they had to duct tape him to the bed because oh. he kept waking up with DTs and he was putting his head under the thing. Ah! Oh, <laughs> it's chaos, dude. I used to, like I said, with McDonald's, like we used to work there and you'd have to like wash your hands so you walked in and it would smell and you'd come in hungover and then you'd hit that fucking and say, the, the smell of the vodka off would make you want to puke. I'm pretty sure when the pandemic started, a lot of places ran out of sanitizer because there was a few times I used sanitizer and I went, that's just fuck. That's Everclear. Shut yes. the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, know yeah. what Everclear tastes like. No, Everclear it was very pretty popular at the beginning. I remember seeing the YouTube videos going, make your own with Everclear and whatever. You would add something. To yeah, it, I was but. using Everclear for the original intention before <laughs> Mrs. Amico had a say. Or had the, one of the many pandemic talks. And the first one was, uh, how old are we? <laughs> we're in our 30s and we're drinking Everclear and orange juice. I'd, yeah, maybe that's what I'll have to do instead of Listerine. Maybe Those are, that's, probably, that's, that's probably worse than Listerine. Everclear fucking is a fucking zero to ninety situation. Is it? That's a, that's that's what we're gonna do. Have you ever fucked with it? No, I've never had it. No, I've had like Pudgeen, which is um, moonshine um, or whatever. You know, so it's like a high proofed. Uh, Everclear is like ninety eight percent. It's like a white whiskey, right? Yeah, it's uh, no. I would say Everclear is closer to vodka. Is it? Yeah. The the best uh, SAT analogy I would say is uh, Everclear is to vodka as Jägermeister is to absinthe, where you're just, all right, we're cranking this the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, the absinthe is a tough one, too. Absinthe's a bad puke. I'm, I've I've always puked if I've had absinthe. Like, I, I've never had absinthe and not puked, if that makes sense, without doing the double negative or whatever. Uh, when I still played music, I was doing a festival in Prague, and mm. somebody brought us a bottle of absinthe, and we went back to somebody's fucking uh, room, and I went to go yak, and I didn't know it was the bidet. <laughs> so I went to go flush it, and, and just sc- it was oh. a green fountain just hit me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you're li- <laughs> oh my god, dude! You like you're like a fucking Charlie Chaplin movie or something. That's so funny. You yeah, it, make was, that a- <laughs> it was it was really silly. <laughs> That's. The- I can't even imagine that happening. <laughs> yeah. And it's absent too because it kind of hurt. It hurts. It smells. Oh, like, it was which awful. was it green? We used to because it used to be legal in Europe when I was a child, and um, so we would get it all the time. And then I think they changed it at one point. It went from like it used to be like ninety something to seventy. They had made it seventy. They were like, all right, let's not yeah. go crazy. Even yeah, the 70- I, I got it in probably I'm thinking like two thousand seven eight. Was mm. probably around when I was drinking it in Europe, and it it packed a punch. Oh yeah, all of that stuff is just it's like it's wild. It should be almost like do there we, was a few do we need it? I know it's like listen, I'm a I'm a libertarian. Do whatever you want in this world, but it's like there's certain times where it's like we just don't need this, guys. What's we funny, don't what? need this. What? You just do do two shots of the fucking fifty yeah. <laughs> percent. Don't just do one. What it, are we what are we running it, out of time? It's odd what some cultures deem okay and don't. So like. I, I just got back from a movie shoot. And I was with my buddy Liam, who's from England, hmm. and every morning he stopped and we, because uh, I love Fago, the insane clown posse, cheap soda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would get one, and he couldn't finish it because he said it was too sweet. But he's like, in England they can't sell this because of the sugar tax. Oh, and this is like whatever the percent of sugar those are, you just can't sell them. Yeah. But when I was in Europe, they had two liter bottles of energy drink. Yeah. With the taurine in it, and I'm like. That can't be good. Yeah, I don't know where they make these rules or whatever. Because like, like well, that, I, a two two liters of energy drink cannot be healthy for an for adult sure. heart. Well, yeah, well, one of the things that they always share in Europe about America's bizarre laws is the 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 Kinder Surprise, which is the little chocolate egg, and then when you would open it, there's like a little toy that you build inside it, mm-hmm. and they they banned them. In, in America, America the kids would eat them and Cause, die because they just they'd gobble them down like <laughs> down yeah. the gullet. They just fucking lob them down, and they're dead by little toy car. And isn't but that they're always like this is illegal? But and then they show you a bunch of guns. But this is not illegal. But isn't that like natural selection? Darwin, yeah, exactly. well, of course, the Darwin Awards. We should kind of we, encourage that. We gotta that. start letting more people die. I'm on, I'm on overpopulation. I don't mean to make a Bill Burr thing out of this. No, nah, dude, like, please. If that's how you're going to go. Absolutely. You, what are you going to contribute? Also, if someone came up to me and said, like, oh, my, you know, my son died. He ate a little thing and choked it up. I'm like, ah, 
you're a bad parent. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> they should confiscate your other kids before they do something stupid like that, jump in the bath with a fucking toaster. I don't know what else is going on with you. Yeah, that'd be funny to blame someone right to their fucking face over their kid. Let's see what else. Amber Heard, apparently, she's uh, she's the victim in all this. Amber Heard accuses Johnny Depp of sexual assault, acting like a monster. Uh, Johnny Depp scrunches face while Amber Heard's attorney alleged um, there was a domestic abuse in the opening statement. Uh the allegations of domestic abuse are being in court at the moment, blah, blah, blah. Um, Acting like a monster could be just funny. <laughs> 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 She's like, no, Jonathan, stop. Um, he was just teaching her how to count. <laughs> <laughs> he had a knife to her throat near far. <laughs> All right, so here's... here's, here's uh, <laughs> One of the most horrific uh, alleged incidents of abuse took place in Australia in 2016. Depp is accused of taking between 8 to 10 ecstasy tablets, ripping off Herb's nightgown, dragging her across the floor and punching and kicking her. (laughs) Oh, no. And then he penetrates her with a liquor bottle. That's the Johnny Depp you're going to hear about in this case. So penetrated her with a liquor bottle. Again, liquor? I hardly know her. Um, Also, we said this off air. Uh, I'd like to know what kind of bottle it was. The the bottle counts. Was yeah. it, was you it said a, airplane bottle? Airplane bottle. That's just a fun game. That's that's a. He hot, might have been sending her home with a surprise. It was like let's play a game. He's like doing his like let's yeah. play a game. Hide bottle. Yeah. I don't even know what his voice is like, but it's kind of British, right? Um, uh, I've been. I I got. I passed out, and a girl put a blunt case up my ass because she was mad that I didn't have sex with her. Blunt. What's a blunt? You know, case? like the plastic shell that goes around. Uh, yeah. A cigar. Like, how big is that? It wasn't that. It was big enough that I wasn't happy about it. It didn't wake you up. No, she took pictures. Oh, it was humiliating, <laughs> dude. Yes, I've been assaulted. <laughs> Guys, when it happens to a man, this is this is no laughing matter. At the Column Terror Podcast, we do not take sexual assault against men lightly. That's a that we no. We're not going down that road. Right up, right it up. And then pictures. It was not a <laughs> pictures on an old flip phone pictures, which oddly more humiliating. Like because they they look like evidence. Yeah, and it was, and it, it's it's still you. It's very, I'm sure you have a tattoo on your fat ass too. Do you? No, I have <laughs> no tattoos. I have no ass. You have no ass. Wow. I have just more legs. Just everything else. <laughs> yeah, it's, my, my ass is never developed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm like you too, man. Flat as a board, baby. Um. Yeah, so, uh, but this is odd, though. It's like you take, uh, he took eight to ten ecstasy tablets and then started punching in the head. That's wild. Who do, like, do you hear how good this song is? <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> the theme from Rocky was on. <laughs> He's like, I love you so much. <laughs> he dragged her across the floor, ripped off the thing, and then stuck a bottle in her somehow. Yeah, if it was a Jägermeister bottle, that's a, that's a, that's that's causing yeah. it. That's causing, that's causing a ruckus. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, who knows? Look, all these celebrities are crazy. All I know is uh, Johnny Depp is friends with Doug Stanhope, so I'm on his side. But she's just so... Go back and watch the Rum Diaries and just be like, oh, you could do anything. Remember the Rum di- Diaries? Which, again, was about... Um, Hunter S. Thompson. Hunter F. Thompson's early days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When she was in that, she was phenomenal. It, yeah. the, the bottle in the puss, that's just like anger because your dick won't get hard, right? I don't know. I feel I like in all the stories over time, anytime somebody's got a bottle in them, it's been like the result of my dick doesn't work. But the old the old fatty Arbuckle, which he did not do. I know, it's I don't synonymous know. with his name. And he didn't do, an old timey actor named Fatty Arbuckle. Fatty Arbuckle. Nice. And, and, and I look like I might be named Fatty Arbuckle. <laughs> uh, he got blacklisted because they said that he had uh, accidentally killed the chick at a party, fucking her with a, a liquor bottle. No. And what? Uh, it was a rumor that dogged him. And I think they found out he didn't. It was completely made up. But it dogged his career. Yeah. How could you? I don't I don't even know how you could kill someone like that. I think it was like a hemorrhaging type thing. Went in and smashed. Yeah, or something it, fucked ever, her up. You ever see that video? Of, uh, one, one, one guy, one jar. One guy, one jar. That's yeah. a, that's. A sh- Can we pull that up? And uh, No, we, we won't be able to get that. But do you know one guy, one jar? No, no. This is like one of those early, he know, yeah, Fonzie knows. He's a psycho. He, 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 I, he watches it every day. There's a guy and there's a jar. Okay. And he sits on it. Oh, okay. And 
God bless his little butt. Yeah, the jar yeah. just couldn't take it. Yeah, it's it's oh, yeah, yeah, it starts off with one guy in a jar, and it ends with just one guy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you that much. It's and a, his ass is a jar. If I remember, yeah. if, <laughs> if, if I re- <laughs> if I remember, it's uh, a mason jar. Maybe it's like so. It's white, and he just shoved it up. Yeah, he's there, a hipster, and he's like yeah. he's at the camp. You can't see anything but his cock and his ass, and he's like squatting down. I don't know how you describe that, like. You know, standing cowgirl squat type mm-hmm. thing. He's just squatting down. He's doing a Hindu squat. He's doing the Hindu squat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like he's having a shit in in, in India, yeah. and it, it goes in, and then it can't take the pressure of his ass, yeah. and the bottle just goes, and you know, it breaks in there. So your ass straight away, it's hugging it. Your ass. So the, the inside, yeah. it's like you can't tell your ass not to grab it because your ass is like, I'm fucking. This isn't right. <laughs> and then it's just, and he, and he just. He must not be alone or something because there's no noise. Like, there must be someone else. Like, his wife is in the room next door or something. Because it's not like he screams. It's just, oh, it's just like, oh. and then he's like pulling it out. Like, so he's like kind of live pulling, and it's just blood dripping down, shards of glass. The worst part about that has to be when you when you have all the pieces out. But then you have to put it back together to make sure you're not missing one. Yeah, because it's a wet. And you're just one shard yeah. short, <laughs> and you, you're rooting around. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, it was a wedding gift, a wedding set, where it's like A and J, <laughs> <laughs> and he just had it up his fucking ass like that. That's rough. That's crazy. Yeah, that okay. there was that that was the same time like Mr. Hands came out, uh, which was the horse. The, the horse. Tour. That documentary is wild. Uh, zoo. I, I don't know the documentary. No, I've never watched that one. There's it's uh, about. So they wouldn't put that guy's name in the press. Mm. That killed him. Not that video, but another time. Oh, it wasn't the video because I saw the video. So that was the video. What happened was that was a farm in Oregon, I believe, which is one of the only states where it was still legal. But they had like a setup. They were making videos and people that were zoophiles kind of went to this farm. And then I think the deal was... uh, the thing just zoo, you know, zoo loop. files is like it, it, is the politically correct term for bestiality. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so nice to know. You know the perf- horse loses it, goes full, all the way in, and it perforates him. You know, it, it stabs him, and the perforates. the people that are with him just fucking dumped him in front of the hospital. Oh yeah, like you know, see you later, horse faggot. They weren't they weren't horsing around these yeah. guys. <laughs> but then he was like a pilot, <laughs> like he even had like a nice job. Yeah, and the thing was whether or not they were going to reveal the identities of the people involved, and that's oh, like the crux the of the doc. Oh, okay, yeah, there was that one. Were you? <laughs> but that's so funny. Just so, so many jokes there. You know, it was like, how's he doing? Ah, he, he's not doing well, but he's stable. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate nothing so much. Hey, at least they gave him a ride to the hospital. They didn't make him huff it. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, yeah. Because uh, that, that was like, that was the time on the internet, like when E fucked was big. I don't remember E fucked, but e- we were, do I yeah, remember like Rotten? Rotten, yeah. There was a, there was a particular era mm-hmm. when there wasn't many things on the internet, but it was all the most Horrible gruesome things. fucking shit. And then, then, and then I don't know. Advertisers getting involved. Yeah. No, you can't do that. You can't even say fuck on YouTube anymore. Yeah. Did you guys in our e-fuck? generation? E- did you guys do e fuck? So yeah. Johnny must have. Johnny's our Johnny's our age in his thirties. Um, Fonz is like twenty two or something. Wait, we can't really hear it. So he said no. Johnny uh, Fonzie doesn't know. Y- you know which? He knew e bombs world. E bombs world is that like a spin off of that? No, e bomb e bombs world was a more tame version of it. Okay, E-fuck was E F U K T, and it had all the funniest. It had a compilation of sex tapes being interrupted by pets. Okay, set to Who Let the Dogs Out. <laughs> that's cute. Probably that's one nice. of the funniest things ever. That's just, like that's nice. Lots of porn bloopers. Yeah. Always great. Yeah. Um, and it's it wholesome. Had, it, my two favorites ever. Uh, one was called Shake That Bear. Oh, my God. And it's oh, a redneck couple hunting. They shoot a bear in a tree. The bear falls out of the tree. This is all the sad music. Okay. And then they fuck on the bear. Oh, they fuck on the bear? Oh, on wow. Dead bear. Yeah. And he's banging her doggy style. <laughs> like, yeah, come on. Shake the bear. <laughs> shake that bear. <laughs> and my other favorite... It's the most real sex video that's ever happened because both people are atrocious and it's this fat couple in a trailer and 
uh, this guy's finger in this chick, and he keeps going, which dick do you want? And she keeps saying, my N dick. Okay. They take out a big black dildo. Oh, my and God. And he's just, they're doing poppers, and he's just killing her with it while she screams the N word. Cool. At one point, uh, they're listening to David Bowie. Mm-hmm. And this is my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, yeah. Sing it, David. <laughs> and she goes, huh? And he goes, and gets mad at her. Goes, David Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, pig. And then it smash cuts to him doing poppers, just jerking off on it. <laughs> wow. This, yeah, dude. Uh, dude. All these videos are just. They do stay with you, all right? I'll never, never not say, I cannot listen and not go, yeah, sing it, David. <laughs> I mean, what was it? Fucking, um... It was like Starman or something. Yeah. It was just <laughs> so funny. <laughs> we just, there was just these early internet times that just were so daunting. I'm sure kids these days would find all their own stuff, but there's no, like, there's no, like, designated fucked up website anymore. This was back when Rotten.com there was there was like fucking four websites. There was like Ask Jeeves and Rotten.com. And then you would just go into Rotten.com just to see. And just have your life ruined. Just see Asian suicides. You know, just some guy jumped off a fucking building and splattered all over the road. And you're just like eight years old. Going, what the <laughs> fuck? Why am I so harassed? There, the- was a, there was a split in between where like you could go to a gas station and get like faces of death. What was that? I don't remember that one. Okay, so faces of death That's a, th- th- is a- mostly staged. Okay. And it was a series of documentaries on death where they would show clips. So they bought a few real clips. So it would have like our Bud Dwyer killing yeah, himself yeah, yeah. and a few Classic. things. But they also staged yeah. a number of things okay. where they had like people at a table beat a monkey's brain and eat the brains. Uh, they had a fake uh, satanic orgy. They had a bomb squad. They had an electrocution. It was a series of like six of them. But then this Mexican company made Traces of Death, which was just body cam footage from cops and just snuff. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. And those you would get at, like, because I would go to, like, horror conventions or, like, VHS swap things. Yeah. And if you went to the right booth, the clamshell case would come down and you could get those. Uh, the, and that yeah. was a nobody be- better be home for this one. There's uh, there's a lot of these when, you know, it gives you the heat. It, no matter how many times you see, you'll see it and go, oh, the heebie-jeebies. It was like that we were talking about last week, that fat kid that got flung out of the fucking roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, that was like, I, I just read about it. And then I spent 25 minutes searching the internet for the video. I see the video. And I went, oh, God, I don't want to see this. <laughs> ah, they you got know, they got out this smut on the internet. This is crazy. Hey, what are they just letting people post anything? Twenty five minutes of me going, that's not it. That's not it. Oh, nope, cut there. Nope, it's blurred. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good enough. I need a post reaction. I need screams. I need all sorts of stuff. There was a great one years ago. I think it was on. It was on the you know, e fucked or one or maybe one of the the more modern sites, and it was a guy getting chased by the police. And he uh, blew his head off with a shotgun, but it was all infrared. Oh. And you saw the steam come off. Oh, of it. yeah. It was Rapid, fucking. Rapidly cooling brain. Brutal. Yeah, you just see the color slowly yeah, that's change. That's exactly what it was. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That was a tough one. Did you see the I want to see Jizz. Who I want to see Jizz cool in infrared. Who was the guy that. Can you um, see if that pops up somewhere? Sure. The guy, Inf- infrared jizz, please. <laughs> this had to be in the last year or two. The guy that killed himself on live stream with the shotgun, and he was talking about how he got fired from Best Buy. I don't remember that one at all, dude. It's rough because the cops are. All, he had basically been saying, "I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself," and the cops are on the way. Hmm. And he really does a good job with the shotgun. Like he, it's gone, <laughs> but he's still in the chair. Yeah. And it's like, you know, drip, drip, drip. And then you watch the cops come in like, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not too late. There was a one. Still hope. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. We shouldn't have stopped on the way. I know. We were late. Um, he comes in with Starbucks. That, yeah. Ah, you know, he's got, yeah, he got the Dunkin' Donuts. A big, he got the family pack of coffee. You know, the, you know that big carton. Yeah. Damn it. Um, but the... Uh, there was one recently. I think the guy lived, but there was like th- they were uh, these three black people in Atlanta, I believe. They're in a car, 
and they have like a gun and it was very much like the um, in Pulp Fiction oh, where okay. he's pointing the gun and they were just like on the thing and she's like talking about the gun and then it just goes off and it blows his fucking head off and they're all just like ah! and his head's just gone apparently he survived but it was like they were doing it on that's Facebook. so much worse it's crazy yeah. If no. I were to be shot, if I woke up and I was like, "No, uh, no, I'm not this guy." It's so much. I'm worse. already insecure, looking normal. <laughs> it's so much. Please, yeah, just like, and you know when they're talking like that, and it's like, there's like a melt, and it's like, is that a? There's like he's talking. I, I don't think he is. <laughs> I don't know if that was a kid. I'd say he doesn't talk yet. <laughs> yeah, I would be so mortifyingly embarrassed. Like, yeah, imagine you're like, this is my moment. I'm gone. And then just, just eyes open oh. back up. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot worse if you're a woman. But, yeah. you know, a guy, you, you got some sort of sick girl. How, how, I feel like you never hear about women shooting themselves, though. Bad aim. Yeah. Well, I feel like, they, I feel like they, that's they, they a clock very back, male. They go to shoot in the face. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's a very, that's a very guy suicide. The shooting? Women yeah. are pills, right? Accidental pills, yeah, I would pills. I assume so. Yeah, they. I'm told that's the way women, to go. Women kill themselves by being too lippy to their yeah. to their husbands. That's that's their own form of. It's like it's not suicide if you point a gun at a cop. Like you know, it's like yeah. kind of like shoot me. Yeah. It's a suicide by cop. It's suicide by husband. Yeah, yeah. Learn to cook. Suicide by cunt. <laughs> uh, I'm told the way to go. Not that I've ever researched it. Killing yourself. I'm told the way to go is pills, but um. Uh, How many pills? What pills? I don't want. I'm not the guy. I'm, not I'm the, told slice of bread in between every few, because a lot of people just do pills and booze. Yeah, and you puke while you're out. Oh, but if you do bread, it keeps it in you. Mm. So I was. To, I'm told uh, slice of bread. You gotta. You gotta work them in. Y okay. So that, <laughs> every it, other pill. It was, it was a how to not wake up tutorial. <laughs> Not that I ever went down that road. No, a few times. <laughs> not that I've ever well, had. We, not that I've ever been had a loaf of Wonder Bread in my Instacart, <laughs> or known what it was for. Yeah, you, you you grab you grab the fucking whole wheat, and you went. Give me the Come fucking. On. Give me the bimbo there. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There's so many ways to do. It. I I think I'd be. I think I'd do. What would I do? What would be my suicide one? There was a there was a great Reddit one, and I love this story, and I, I hope it's true. It's hard to tell, but there was a kid in, say, San Francisco, somewhere in, near San Diego, and he was near the border, and he was like 18, and his life sucked, and he was a virgin, and he hated life, and he said he was, he, he, he left to go to t Tijuana to get some sort of pills. And then when he showed up there, he, he was like got his little hotel or whatever, and there was like a bunch of whores around the place. And so they went down to like CVS to try get whatever pills to kill himself. And then they were like, oh, we've got, um, we have like quaaludes and we have uh, Coke and all this stuff. So he's like, fuck, it, I'll just give some Coke. So he ends up just doing some Coke. He goes back to the hotel. He does a bunch of whores. He ends up buying them for the weekend. He ends up just going on the biggest tier anyone's ever gone on. Just, just orgies and Coke and, and dick pills and all sorts of shit. And then at the end of it, he was like, life's worth living. So then he, he went home and scrunched up the fucking suicide now. His mother didn't even know he was gone. And then he was like, yeah, this is it. So I do say that, guys. Yeah. If you're out here, right? And I mean it. And obviously, go to better help if you have some suicide issues. Uh, but... I mean it. Go out high. Just do me a favor. Go have, out good. Have a good hurrah. If yeah. you if you, don't just go outside, just please go to Vegas. <laughs> do something. Just get a whore. Suck off a tranny. I don't know what you gotta do, but go out good. Get some good drugs, and then then blast yourself in the head with a gun or something. If, you, if there's anything left in your bank account. Yeah. You fucked up. Oh, no, you you gotta put it all on red. Yeah. Yeah. Get some good code. That's where you find a hooker with a period. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I would. That, that's the way. There's there's too much for me to to do before I die. Like I would, and I probably would do something fun, like go to like the San Francisco Bridge or something. You know, jump off that place. See, what I'm afraid on that is so many people that have jumped say that it takes so long. That by the time you're halfway through, you're like, what did I do? Of course. <laughs> Everyone's like that. But thank God. I think most places when it's so high up, you pass out. Is that, You do from the like, I altitude? think you pass out from the uh, uh, change in pressure. Oh, yeah. Altitude. Yeah. It's too much too fast. Yeah. But a bunch of people that have survived jumps, I think every single one of them has been like, yeah, you really, you get buyer's remorse real quick. Dude, um, Kevin Ryan 
told me a great story and I'm, I'm assuming he's told it on podcast but he was in the city one night doing comedy and he decided to walk back to Queens so he went across the fucking uh, the RFK bridge or uh, one of the bridges I don't know which one and like there was a like he's just at late at night he's drunk and there was like a security guard like going whoa whoa, whoa where are you going he's like I'm just walking across and he's like dude don't it's fine you don't need to do it or something like that and he's like ah I'm good don't worry about it and he's walking and then he put takes a photo and he takes a photo of like the bridge and he has some sort of like um, this is it or something because he's like happy he just did comedy the, the, he's drunk and he goes like this is it like life is and he's like what a beautiful photo and then his battery dies so everyone thinks he's killing himself and he's like halfway through the bridge and the cops pull up and they're like don't do it don't do it he's like what are you talking about turns out because like it's a, it's a suicide place fucking but I think that's like the funniest thing of all time. It's really funny. It's like the funniest fucking thing. It's like something out of a fucking Curb Your Enthusiasm <laughs> episode or something like that. I hope he's told that I didn't just ruin a story now. Ah. Yeah, fuck him. Why are you snoozing on that story? <laughs> it's a great suicide story. Yeah, you could... Hanging Hanging seems tough. I would I would be so embarrassed if I woke up after a suicide attempt. God. Yeah. Ah, kill me. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then hang, hanging seems like... Uh, it's, it's a bit mean to the people finding you too it's like a fucking yeah I don't think you shouldn't yeah you shouldn't have like a graphically found clean up situation like that's a that's fucky so do you know the comic Lauren Petrie she's like a goth chick covered in tattoos no uh, she worked at a morgue oh. and we I went over all this with her and I said that if I was gonna kill myself a hotel room okay I don't want you know sorry Mexican lady <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I don't want somebody I love to find me. <laughs> she just walks in and there's like a rag in a yeah. bag. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at, least, yeah. at least he washed his ass. <laughs> uh, and then I would get a first floor hotel room. Okay, because I've been told that uh, I am past the point of uh, moving. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Where they have to like make put uh, two gurneys together. You should fuck up. No, you should just fuck them up to be and a I, prick. Like, just... I, if somebody like hurt their back and like can't play with their kids that day, I would feel so guilty. <laughs> you would, you so got to be first floor. And then if it's anything messy, tub. Because mm. I don't want people to have to like scrub it out. Yeah. Messy. That's tough. I know. You know, I know someone who killed herself and she had like a real graphic like. It was aerosol in a in a Ziploc bag, and then so she sprays the thing with aerosol, the Ziploc bag. Then she has the uh, zip ties, the fucking around the wrists, and then around the thing, and then like texts her dad or something. It's like, hey, I just killed myself or something like that. And it's like, that's so bad, so horrible to show up there. That. That's a tough one. That's like a mean thing to do. Yeah, that's a mean. I know you're killing yourself. Who knows what's going on in there? But that's a tough one. Yeah, there's just be a nice, there just be, there just be a nice way of just going. I'm just gonna go missing. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, That's yeah, a good yeah. one. Leave them constantly wondering. Yeah, <laughs> give them that element of hey, she could walk in the door tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think th they they have like an Andy Dufresne thing in their head? You're on a beach somewhere, just like you just said, you just checked out. But realistically, you just jumped on a highway or something. Um, all right, dude. Let let's do some plugs, shall we? Um, I'm sure the majority of people know Zach and his product uh, projects. If not, go check out his stuff. Please, Zach, tell the, the tell the folks where they yeah, can see Instagram, you. Yeah, Instagram, Zach is not funny. I got three podcasts. The Real Ass Podcast, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with Louis J. Gomez. Bye, guys, with Ian Finance on Thursdays. And I have a horror movie watch-along show called Zach Miko's Midnight Spook Show, Fridays at Midnight, on the Gas Digital Network. I got a movie that just came out called Hashtag Shakespeare's Shitstorm, currently screening in New York City at the Cinema Village. And uh, we're going to be touring with it for the next few months before we come out on Blu-ray. Yeah, Dude, go get, go check out Zach. He's on the road with a lot with um, Lewis. So yeah, that's yeah. Like, when does this come out? Uh, this comes out Friday. Oh, great! Uh, if you're listening live, I will be at the Stress Factory in Jersey tonight with Lewis, Ian Finance, and Jamie Kilstein. And next weekend, I will be at Zany's in Chicago. Two shows. Nice, dude. Go check out Zach. He's a killer. Go check out his podcasts. I do them a lot. Um, it's always a lot of fun. Zach's been very nice to me in my journey into comedy. Um, and leave a comment if you can too, because. People often say that the, the Column Tour podcast fans are good for coming over, and that is important. I know it's a, it's a, you're always getting asked to do a lot, but it doesn't take a whole lot of time. Just leave a comment, say uh, you liked his appearance on the Column Tour podcast. Let people know that this is a podcast that's worth getting on, because if you do that, I can get bigger guests, and this will keep growing, and then you, you can do less and less of all, all this like and share bullshit. Um, I've got dates coming up. Um, if you're watching this today on Friday... Uh, the 22nd, I'll be in Cleveland tonight with the uh, with Mike 
uh, Rainey and Tim Butterly of Dad Meat Podcast. Um, the early show is sold out. We've added a late show, so get your tickets for that. And later on in the year, we're going to Texas. We've got Houston, Austin, San Antonio lined up. We've got Indianapolis lined up later on in the year. Um, and we're also going to go to North Carolina in the later. I'm also going to be adding sh- shows in Tampa and Boston. I'm just waiting for those links to be available. And um, that'll be a solo headline um, stuff there. So please come out, catch, catch us on the road if you haven't already. Thanks, everybody. Fellas, the Colin Terrell podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. I have just signed up for this package, and I'm not just saying that because they're a sponsor. Um, it is something I've gotten into l- lately. Um, especially men, there's only men who listen to this podcast. So we are going to talk to you particularly. I know there is some women in here. You guys probably have mental health issues also, but you guys already talk to all of your friends already. So sure, come join Better Help. But men, we're talking to you. Men's health is a crisis that does not get addressed. Now, I'm also always been on the fence about therapy. And I'll say, I say therapy because of my dumb Irish accent. So maybe I need speech therapy, not just the mental version. Um, but, you know, we live in a bravado world and we also live in a world where we're not able to talk about what's going on inside. And, and male suicide rates are through the roof. But that's not necessarily what, all we're talking about here. There's an opportunity for us to progress and grow better. Um, and better help is an opportunity for you to do this. I signed up just yesterday and... Um, you know, I've always been maybe what's going to go on here, but I've decided with the amount of people that I know that are already using this service, I said, let me give it a go. Let me see what happens here. So I signed up at betterhelp.com and I tell you, the process was pretty easy. There's a QA and a at the beginning. You go through all your, um, what you want out of life, where you're going, what are your issues, and then you get to choose what type of therapist you want. And within two hours, they've already assigned me someone. So I'm looking forward to my journey here, hopefully fixing some of the demons that I have within me. And maybe I won't be um, self-medicating so much, if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> which, which is bad for all the people that sell me the medications that I take. Um, Look, BetterHelp, it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's a professional therapy done securely online and the services available for clients worldwide. And it is important to me for men, especially the people that listen to this podcast, because you are people that uh, help me a lot already. And so I want to help you guys. If there's stuff getting you down, don't be the big man who's too afraid to actually go figure this stuff out. There's there's probably something somewhere that we're all not dealing with and this is just an opportunity for you to take responsibility and put yourself in a situation where we can improve ourselves go check it out see if it's for you it may not be the thing for you but at least we know that we're trying that's all we're asking is try give yourself the best opportunity at in life and um, visit betterhelp.com slash collie c-o-l-l-i-e that's better help h-e-l-p and join over two million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional in fact so many people have been using better help that they're recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Special offer for my listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash collie. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash collie. C-O-L-L-I-E. Do it today. Join me. I'm going to be talking about my journey through this um, uh, therapy too on the podcast. And so I'm leading by example. Who knows what's going to happen, but I do feel like we will get to a better place by the end of it. The Column Thero podcast is brought to you by Lucy. Look, we're all adults here and I know some of us choose to use nicotine to relax, focus and just unwind after a long day. Uh, Lucy is a modern oral nicotine company that makes nicotine gum um, and pouches for adults who are looking for the best, most responsible way to consume their nicotine. Listen, we're addicted. We're all addicted to something, be it your phone, be it drinks, be it um, cigarettes, whatever it is. But at least now we've got an opportunity to wean yourself off that stuff. Um, the Lucy's have been kind enough to send us out some stuff. I've been checking this one out myself. I've been a smoker for years. Um, I, I've, I've re- trying to quit all the time. I'm now using Lucy's. Which we've had the mango, which is mango is the best flower. I know the boys in the booth that produce the podcast, you've already been trying the stuff. What do you, what's your the, uh, opinion of the mango flavored uh, pouches? Yeah, I love them. He loves them. There you go. You heard it from straight from the horse's mouth. He got it sounded like a horse too. I love the mango. If that was a cartoon horse, you'd be like, that's a good voice. I don't know how you did that. But um, 
check out this product. Um, smoking, you're gonna stink. Women honestly don't want to. Here's the problem: is boys, I know what it's like. Don't diminish your opportunity to get laid. All right, no woman will sleep with you if she doesn't like the smell of cigarettes, right? But a smoker will sleep with you. So you, here's the thing is maximize your opportunity to bust a nut. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're just, you're, you're, you're losing women right now. This will get you laid, right? It will get you laid. You look cool. You're chewing on a little pouch. Uh, you look like Clint Eastwood in a movie, right? If you enjoy using nicotine, you should definitely check out Lucy's products at lucy.co. That's lucy.co. Oh, and use the promo code Collie, C-O-L-L-I-E, at checkout if you buy us. Make sure you use the promo code, guys. It's the only way we can keep the roof above our heads, the lights turned on. This is the opportunity for you to get a little kickback up the Collie wobbles here. God knows I need the money. So make sure you use that promo code Collie, C-O-L-L-I-E. Um, uh, also, I have to read this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. If you didn't know that, you are a moron. And I don't want you watching my show. Go away. Go. If that was for you, fuck off. <laughs> Remember, if you're interested in a better way to use nicotine, visit lucy.co and be sure to use the promo code Collie. That's C-O-L-L-I-E. Now, back to the show. All right, let's talk about this... Uh, Apple adds a pregnant man and gender-neutral emojis to iPhones. Uh, iPhone users across the globe may have noticed several new options in their emoji keyboard. By the way, I would this could have been out five years ago. I, I have no idea. idea. No. I'm still giggling sending my friends the black thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every, if I'm I still eggplant, dude. If I want a thumbs up, you better believe it was a black hand. Yeah. I, I, I had uh, someone hit me up. I got mine's set to black, too. And and then I but sometimes I'm working with people I don't know, like in driving trucks. So I'll just like get a text saying like, "Hey, let's meet at the job tomorrow at nine a.m." And their name is like Philip or or Phil or you know, or mm -hmm. TJ, and you're kind of going, "I'll just have to do the white one for the, I don't know which one. I don't want to be the I don't want to be the guy to show up and they're like, "You sent me a black fucking." And I'm like, "Yeah, I thought we were friends." Um. Yeah, so iPhone users across the globe may have noticed several new options in their emoji keyboards, including a pregnant man and a gender-neutral pregnant person. The new uh, update rolled out mid-March, and it came with 37 new emojis. Um, so I don't know. It's getting a little bit... Listen, everyone live, live your life, do your thing. It's like it's, it, it's just crazy how much... And I'm not helping bring it up on the podcast, but it is odd just how much of this shit gets talked about constantly, right? So on one hand, I'm like, I'm an old man yelling at the clouds. I'm like, do we need it? How many pregnant men are there that are like, man, I wish I could express this with an emoji, with an emoji. But at the same time, does it affect our lot? It's just an extra thing. Who yeah. gives a shit? If it makes a few people happy. Fucking go ahead. Have your fucking no, emoji. No, not at all. <laughs> we can't just have placating. To these, is that the word? We can't just start fucking doing it for the. They get they're getting too much press. These trans, right? <laughs> Listen, I'm all well and good. You do your thing, but we can't just start changing everything for like a fuck of four people. Where's my dyslex dyslexic left-handed emoji? Right, I'm a left-handed dyslexic with a small cock. Where's am I in there? Is there a small cock emoji? Yeah, it's a shamrock. <laughs> <laughs> They need a tiny eggplant, just a little little skinny potato, a little carrot for me, <laughs> a fucking raw carrot. Yeah, I don't it know. Does, it does make a big difference. Like, yeah, it's it's fucking a new thing, I guess. I, I don't it's know how I feel about it, but it's a fucking emoji, man. Yeah. I barely use emojis, and if I do, I'm probably being silly or ironic. Yeah, of course. I'm not, you know, that's, I think that's that generation after us that actually communicates in emojis. Yeah, I also do think if the vast majority of people using them aren't going to be like, hey, here's a like if even my most wokest friends, if they sent me a pregnant man emoji, I'd be like, "Yo, what we? What's going on?" I would say you're that, fucking, you're fucking with them, right? Like, like if I got back from a buffet, I would be like, "I feel like." <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's gonna be one of your most regular Michael, fucking that emojis, is, that dude. Is my new emoji for I have to shit <laughs> <laughs> is the pregnant man. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a constipated emoji. That's what I thought that was. That's a pregnant man. You can't be pregnant as a man. What are you talking about? Um. Yeah, so look, it's just, you know, it, the, the world is just trans, trans, trans at the moment. It's crazy. It is weird, too. It's like, I, I 
so many trans people show up on my timeline because um, I'm looking to send them death threats. But no, <laughs> it's just, no, if you're a trans person, seems like you're popular. You get a lot of, I think you get, you get a lot of traction. You get a lot of traction. Like you tweet, hey, it's a great day in New York. People are like, all right, whatever. You go, hey, as a trans person, it's a great day in New York. It's viral. People are singing, they're dancing, they're sending a pregnant man emoji. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it is odd because it does, it's such a small fraction of uh, the I, country. And I hate to, once again, I feel like such a fucking old curmudgeon when I say this. I just feel like we go through phases of like who it's, He's cool. Trendy to be have to have in your deck of friends. Yeah, for sure. And I think in the nineties, you know, look at my cool black friend. And then two thousands, you got look at my cool gay friend. Yeah. And now we've just, you know, look at his look trans. at my gay black trans friend or, you know. Gay black trans friend. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, we, we we just keep doubling down and we we What's next? The, the left fucking... collects friends like Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what's the next evolution? What do they it's like so you're saying a trans black person who's gay is like the the Mewtwo. Well, I think of the Mewtwo of I think it's, humans. it's trans the one way. Not a lot of people are showing off the male to the female to male still. Like yeah, here, that's a real that's a, a human. Here's a fat Mexican with a mustache who's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's still I think turning people. Yeah, that's what, still odd. Yeah, there's not maybe I don't know, there's not a lot of women Trans, transing into I, uh, I man, played, is there? One of the bands I played in, our singer was trans, and she lives in a punk house in Philly. And it was uh, a trans house, right? The whole house, yeah, yeah. Six trans people. That's it's like a fucking. It, it was a, uh, it was like a haunted house. It was just screaming coming dude, out of everything. Dude, uh, everybody's on everything. Of course, I opened and, up the Andy Cohen was doing a and reunion. It was just medicine. <laughs> I was like, I don't think anyone is eating food here. And she was the sweetest chick. Her name was Heather. Just and wigs all up. Her therapist went. Get out of that fucking house. For sure. And she goes, why? They're like my friends. We're like, you know, like trans artist collective fucking, mm. I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we make tens of dollars a month together. <laughs> and uh, she's like, get the fuck out of that fucking house and move in with women. Yeah. And she's like, why? She's like, how are you going to learn how women act? Yeah. And how to behave as a woman when no one in your air, surrounding area knows what or who they are yeah. at any point of the day. Yeah, that sounds chaos. That sounds like something like a like a game show. So it's when like, you see a ton of like trans people together, I'm like, you guys are just treading water. Yeah. You gotta fucking assimilate. You gotta yeah. That's 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 the trans people out there, the ones that are just hiding in plain sight, you know? Little, just like a. We're just not making a fucking thing of yeah, it. Yeah, happen to be just like a little boy, and then so now you're a little girl. You know, it's like tough. It's like you do feel sorry for, like if I was a trans or you were a trans, you know, it would be tough. You, you got you, you got a Fonzie's got a pretty face, and um, the Glovester has a has a female body. <laughs> he's petite. So he ha he's already petite. Yeah, <laughs> imagine I walk up, hey. You know, that's a rough one. You know, you feel sorry, but the girls to male seems to be, I think it's more like you just don't know, right? Because it doesn't take much to be a man, does it? Just no, they're a, Just a bit of courage? Pumped. They're always real pumped on, and the, I can't grow any facial hair, so. Oh, they're always, they're the jaw? They're real pumped on the facial hair. Yeah, I saw, I, I know some trans guy, I guess. I don't know him, but he's, he's like a Twitter celebrity, and he's always posting like up, upgrades of what his face used to look like as a chick and now it's like that and I was like dude I need to I need to, I need to also be more manly yeah I, I need some tea right I'm just saying I'm just saying can we listen I'm not gonna stop you doing you can do whatever you want but can I also just get a little bit of, yeah give me a bit of tea give me a bit of fucking tea by the way also give me some muscles you, give me a, give me a beard you know who else is going through all the same shit as those people doing that transition Joe crazy Rogan. Uh, well, <laughs> Joe Rogan. I was gonna say crazy steroid people. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, like I, I've I heard a story once when they were doing tryouts for WWE, and it's like all of the main. I'm talking like the head honchos. Yeah, and this guy comes in and he's yoked because what happens is they they pump up before the audition because then they're gonna have to go off of it, and in the middle of his tryout match, somebody has to lean over and go, "Does he know he's leaking?" Ah, because he started lactating in the middle of the oh, match. Oh, he started lactating because they put you on all this shit, but then they have to give you to get other off. Stuff. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, to, to balance fix out. You. Yeah, yeah. And he's just started lactating. And he's crying. The he's like, I'm <laughs> so embarrassed. <laughs> Have you ever, do people on steroids are nightmares to be? Are around. they? I'm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. lots of lots of fight. I, I knew I'm a getting. Bunch on, I'm getting on. I'm gonna get on something. I'm, you no, go through some let's shit. Let's do that as like a as a Patreon goal. But it's like I'm, I need to get roided up, dude. I, what I, I, do, I recently because I'm never gonna get thin, but I would love to just go on a cycle and lift like a monster. Because yeah. I want. I want you Bulgarian. know the hard stomach. Yes, I know what you mean. The Bulgarian fat man who yeah. lifts weights. Yeah. I want. I know that. that. Just that Eastern European weightlifter. That's the. That's a man. You know, a guy who can't walk up the stairs, but he will just fucking. He can rip a watermelon open. That's the. That's the. That's a man. I don't want to be shredded. I don't want to. Have di- you know, the dick V. No, I want that's, the hard gut. Yeah, I want to just be able to like lift a log for some reason. I want to. I want to even. The attempt to flip a tire, yeah. something like that. One of the wrestling shows I was on, I, there was a guy like that on the on the card, and I it was the most impressive and scariest thing I've ever seen. Wrestling sucks. Okay. It takes a lot out of you. Even like a dumb little match, you are blown up. Yeah, it's a lot of moving. And the second you get in there, for people on I, I manage pro rally, about you know the guy on the side that gets beat up, and. Uh, you step in that ring, it feels like you're running on the beach because it's like got the padding in it. Yeah, yeah. It sucks. I watched a guy plan his match out, and he's a big guy, hard stomach. And then I watched him eat an entire pizza before the match. <laughs> like it was the kind of meal you're like, I would have to go to bed for the day. But that's what these guys are blowing through on calories. Yeah. I know sure. Matt Riddle, uh, who's in great shape. He's in WWE now. My buddy trained with him, and he said he would eat a whole pizza. In between drills, oh wow! Because he's such like a he, fucking like a fucking horse of an gigantic. athlete, yeah. That he's he's killing five thousand calories a day to yeah. have abs. It was yeah, it was like remember Michael Phelps mm-hmm. he, when he released his um he released his daily thing, and it was like by the time it's like first of all he goes to the gym three times a day or something fucking crazy like on a hard course of, but like by the time he got to breakfast it's like 4,000 calories like he would wake up and have 12 egg omelette plus oats and all this type of stuff he would go work out come back then he would have like five lunches it's like these guys are fucking animals um, alright let's go back to the two inmates at an all women's New Jersey jail are pregnant after both had sex with challenged Jen, they're prisoners. Oh, I, I, I was under the impression it was one person. ACLU won battle to house 27 trans inmates there. ACLU, isn't that a college? The pregnant women um, are housed at the embattled end of something correction facility in Clinton, New Jersey. It is unclear if these women had sex with the same transgender one, woman. Uh, there's 27 transgender prisoners and over 800 cisgender women. Uh, the correction facility began to house inmates by gender identity last year after reaching a settlement in a lawsuit brought by a trans woman and the ACLU. Uh, I'm guessing that's like the American something. American Civil Liberties Union. Oh, look at you, I Professor. Uh, and the man, the only woman's prison in the state, does not require transgender inmates to proceed with reassignment surgery in order to be housed. In recent years, and the man has grappled with reports of widespread abuses and systematic failures. Ten prison guards face criminal charges stemming from an alleged assault on inmates, including a transgender woman, in January 2020. What do we think? All right. (laughs) That's a tough call because if you are trans, you're either going to love or hate prison. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Depending on your attitude and what you're into. Yeah. I've, the, did you watch Oz? No. Ever? Yeah. There's one one of the characters looks kind of like me, but in better shape. And he they he goes from my first day in prison to pigtails and lipstick in about three days. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, man, that's I got to hope to God that I walk into. It's like when I whenever I get pulled over by the cops, I'm like, please love Anthony Cumia. Please <laughs> yeah. love him. And I've got it. You got times. you got the cu- the Cumia bump. I've got nice. the Cumia bump from cops. Nice. I say Cumia is just fucking speeding around Long Island, does he? Oh he's yeah. He's just rallying around, fucking screaming slurs is, at the fucking. He, he, he is the fucking <laughs> run of the land out there. <laughs> and uh, my uh, my brother in law's NYPD. Nice. And, uh, his two best friends are a fire chief and uh, uh, a medic, and they took me to a firefighter bar, and I was terrified because this was like where men drink. And mm. I walk in and I am out of place. And then one guy goes, are you a comedian? I go, 
Yeah. He goes, I saw you on Anthony Kumi. I'm like, yes. <laughs> let's, Drake, start, let's start dropping some inappropriate words. <laughs> he goes, prove it. Yeah. Say, yeah. But I would, I would probably, I would have to, I would have to hope to God some white supremacist found me in jail because I would have to. I think it's my only chance because I'm course. just such a pussy. I, would, I don't know what I'd do. I do. First of all, I'm putting on a wig saying I'm trying. Send me over to the women's thing. Yeah. All right. First of all, because yeah, I'm still going to get beaten up. I'm still not the toughest guy at the women's prison either. No, no, no. But at least I have something sort of, hey. Yeah. You know, at least, at least I can outsmart them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know what the, the answer is. It's all kind of weird. And it also, if you're a chick in there and you're just horny as fuck and then they send in some chick with a dick, you're going, oh yeah, I'm not eating box no more. I'm getting this fucking... Well, guy. I think women's this- present because I think they fuck like animals in there. They are. They're fucking... I they're, knew a they're, chick they're practically that, uh, animals, these women. This is a very me story. Okay. A chick I knew <laughs> went to jail for domestic abuse. Okay. Which is impressive. It is, yeah. Do you know how fucked up the situation is in a straight relationship where the girl goes to jail? What was she doing to the guy? Smacking him with a baseball bat? What the fuck? So she and her boyfriend got in a bad fight. For They were living in a trailer outside of Vegas because this is where this happens. Yeah. The cops get there. So he was deformed. He had lobster hands. Oh. And the like, cops- like, like that was like the, yeah, like the peanuts? Yeah. He was all Peanut fucked fingers? Up. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're like, well, he couldn't have been the one that was the aggressor here. <laughs> and she told me when she was in jail, it was her and like six other chicks. And every night they all used to lay in a circle and have a contest for who could come the most times. Wow. And they would keep every count. Night they would, yeah. Yeah, but then they would keep count, like almost like at a gym where it's like who did the yeah, best on the machine the that day. Yeah. They as they had a wreck who could come the most times in a row in these like fucking clam jam pits. This is this, see, this is this is what this is what happens. You leave these women to their own devices. Like they say they say we suck, but like this is what they do on the, when they're alone. They have coming contests. <laughs> you kidding me? Do you know what they do in prison? Men in prison, we read we read Hemingway. Yeah, we find Allah. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> we we come out having speaking speaking a new language. Yeah, we come out shredded. We've yeah. got traps and shit. What are they doing? Just squirting on the floor? <laughs> Fuck's sake. Fuck, keep them in there. Keep them in there. Um, I, did you watch Lady Birds on Netflix? That was my favorite. When they're all in the... Uh, the women's prison doing the toilet talk? I did not see that. No, I'm sorry. Oh, dude, it's the best. It's a uh, uh, women's prison, and it's just like the ins and outs of it. And first of all, they'll introduce chicks and then not say what they're in jail for for like three episodes. Yeah. And it's it's like murder. It's, it's always it's, it's always like meth and murder, and then just, they'll leave halfway through the season, and you're like, "We're gonna see this bitch again," and then they just fucking haul him right back. Like <laughs> they made it three days on the outside. Wait, and is this, was this like a drama or is no? This it's a doc. A, it's a, oh, it's a doc. Okay, and it's great, but they do this thing, toilet talk. So uh, it was a co-ed prison, like so there was men on the other floors, but they could never see them. So what they would do is um, they drain the water out of the toilet. And they'll take a cardboard roll and you could talk to whoever's in your pipeline. So everybody had a boyfriend and a girlfriend through the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but you can send them gifts and shit. Oh, you could. So they'll could take you? a string. They'll like rip up a sheet and make it a long string and then tie a bunch of plastic forks and knives to it as like a hook. Yeah. And they'll buy each other shit from the commissary, flush it down the john. And then it's your job to catch the line and you pull it back up. <laughs> Wow. Romance lives. Um, and then one girl, of course, catches her boyfriend talking to another chick on the toilet. Ah, uh, Puerto Rican. And they immediately start brawling in the prison. Oh, of course. Oh, it's the best. It's, wait, wait, you're going to not talk to another chick? You're in prison. Baby, I'm locked up in here. <laughs> yeah, there's pussy everywhere. All right. That's how long? About an hour? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Listen, uh, Zach, like I said, everybody, go check out Zach's projects. He's the man. Go check him do his wrestling, too. It's a very unique thing for a comedian to be doing such a thing. Thank you so much, man. Like I said, big fan, dude. And uh, thank you so much for coming out. Absolutely. Catch you next time, man.